just got this new one for you. In fact, the author asked for you by name. He wants you to read it, gather your thoughts, and come up with a pitch for it. Big fan of indie projects, I take it. You've got more fans than you think. Now, I've gone ahead and sent you a copy. The book hasn't gone to print yet, so it's loose leaf. Does that work for you? I don't know how exactly you like to take notes. Yes, it, it does. I'm really excited to get to work on this. Glad to hear that, Johnny. What's it about? I think that's what the author wants you to decide. Truly, good luck with this one. You can do this. Men of King George's 34th Regiment of Foot set out upon what is now Pennsylvania. Their mission was to drive out the ever encroaching French presence in the territory. Those lands were lawfully owned by the Ohio Company by way of royal charter. Any and all French claim to the land was therefore unlawful. The king's laws required enforcement. And so that is what they fought for. And that is what they died for. Odd. Irishmen during these times were no stranger to death, and yet the sight and stench of this band now drove even the strongest of stomachs amongst the soldiers to turning. The sweltering summer heat surely did not help. Vomit, blood, and equipment too heavy to carry under these conditions dotted their path back to the Virginia colony. With this in mind, it is of no surprise how these men reacted to what they came upon next. The house was massive, consisting mainly of painted wood, its face a pale white with great columns imposing on the soldiers below. A non-commissioned officer among the ranks, born in the colony of Virginia, remarked at how it reminded him of the plantation house he grew up in. The strange thing was, they were still many miles from the colony, deep in the forest of the Ohio Territory. Who could have possibly transported the materials, skill, and labor necessary to build this structure and then have simply abandoned it? Some feared this to be a trap from the French, but they were quickly overruled. To continue on the march was surely death. This was their salvation. The interior was as if, if not more grand than the exterior. Archways marked the boundaries between its many different sections. The ceilings were twice as high as the ones in European chateaus, and everything was painted and even white. The men made camp inside and rested, for a time. Hey, uh, sorry to call you right now. I just had a bit of an important question about the book. What book? The book. The one you told me to read and make an outline of? Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? I just noticed that there's no name on the cover, and I was wondering, why is that? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's being published anonymously. Uh, I'm, I'm still gonna get to speak with the author, though, right? Of course, Johnny. By the way, how's it coming? Once the general succumbed to his wounds, a mutiny was inevitable. 
The officers had claimed the entirety of the house for themselves, forcing the men to camp outside. They believed that in the night, in that pitch blackness, the hallways of the house grew to impossible lengths. Following them would surely lead them to home, great riches, or even to God. For who else could have constructed this place? The first to go was the Virginian non-commissioned officer. He received a bayonet to his stomach, spilling him out onto the white floors. The mutineers then made their way upstairs. They had their vengeance on the most vicious of officers. Those who had their men whipped were dragged out onto the front steps and doused in boiling water. Then a drunken firing squad carried out the execution. Relieved of their command, the men once again took up residence in the house, singing, drinking, and dancing. That is when the house swallowed them all. Swallows them all. Why? Why does the story end that way? Because... I deserve it. <laughs> Just like a melody that leaves her song.